My sister is what I would consider a classic A student. She can diagram a sentence, conjugate a verb, solve an equation. She can whip me at boggle, scrabble, even though I'm the writer. She is now a teacher. But once upon a time, she got straight A's in elementary school, junior high school, high school, and I thought in college, but no, no. My sister Fallacy, my older sister, got one B, which I did not know about until we were having lunch one day a number of years ago. Got to talking about school, and I said, oh, you know, you were straight A's in college, so impressive. She said, no, actually, I got the one B. I said, what was that in? She said, creative writing. <laughs> and I said, creative writing? I didn't know you took creative writing. And she said, yeah, I took it. I hated that class. I said, why? She said, because there's no right answers. That's right. There are no right answers. And I was thinking of her when I interviewed Manil Suri. He's a novelist, literary novelist, but also he teaches mathematics at Duke. So this is advanced mathematics. This is theoretical mathematics. And I talked to him about the difference between trying to teach mathematics and writing. He said, oh, I would never teach writing. He said, because when I teach math, there's one answer and you can't argue about it. But in writing, there is no right answer and there's nothing but argument. And I think it's worth remembering as you write fearlessly, because we live in our normal lives, in our non-writing lives, there are a lot of what seem to be right and wrong answers. Certainly in the world of math and science to which we owe so much in our modern world, there's a lot of right answers and they're, they're dependent on. And there's a sense certainly within journalism of truth of fact and fiction, of lies and truth. And all these concepts are very important to us, right and wrong, good and bad. It's very clear. Right answers, wrong answers. And we all went to school, most of us. And of course, in school, there's a lot of right answers and there's wrong answers. And you're graded well for the right answers, graded poorly for the wrong answers. A lot of our life, right and wrong, right and wrong. Then we come to creative writing where there is no right answer. What you consider... A great book, I might not like at all. I've talked about this often in this podcast. And that can be a little hard for us uh, as adults to accept that there is no right answer, that we have to trust in something else. But I would counter that in a way, there is one right answer that each of us can depend on. It's just that each answer is different. And that answer is what is interesting to you. What turns you on? What excites you? What is the story that draws your attention to it? That is the right answer to the question, what should I be writing about? What should come next in my story? Because what should, if you and I could start telling the same story with the same characters in the same situation, we could start in the same place, but it, that story would immediately go in different directions as what interests me and what interests you and what interests the next person next to us is different. And away goes that story. It is so important as a writer to always be tuning back in, back in, back in to the only right answer you'll ever know, which is, is this interesting to me? Is this exciting to me? And in so much of life, that seems like that's not the kind of answer you're looking for. Certainly not in the mathematical and scientific part of life, but in the creative part. The only right answer is what excites you, what interests you. That's the way stories are told. And when you can accept that, when you can accept, can accept that that is good enough, that that's enough for you to write the story you want to write, then you begin to write fearlessly regularly because you are always turning your attention towards something you and you alone know what you care about. So there are no right answers. Instead, all there are are right questions, the questions you're interested in. A story is like a question that you ask and answer and ask and answer. So don't worry about the right word. Le mot juste, that French phrase for the perfect word. In a way, it doesn't exist. Just the word that you are excited by the most, the sentence you are interested in the most. Oh, it's the best feeling. It's the best feeling when you let that be your guide and not trying to please someone, not trying to please some teacher, some external force, just what interests you. What's the story you want to tell? Only you.
Oh, it's a great question to ask. And it's the only one you can really answer. So thanks for watching. As always, if you like these, subscribe so you don't miss any dollop of inspiration. And if you like it, say so. Click like, put in a comment. I love to hear from you. So until next week, this is Bill Knauer. Stay fearless.